Hi, and welcome to my kitchen. Now, you may not know it, but all throughout northern Mexico and all down the Baja Peninsula, one of the most favored dishes is called machacado con huevo or shredded jerky with scrambled eggs. Now, it's very popular but very little known in the United States because we don't really have the jerky at ready access. So I'm going to take you through it. It's a very simple dish to make. And I think it's one that a lot of you are going to really enjoy making because you'll enjoy the flavor of it. But first you got to get the right jerky. So in my Mexican grocery store, all they have is dried beef and carne seca, they call it. And it's just sold usually back at the, uh, at the butcher's counter. You can order it and then take it home and then turn it into the shredded dried jerky, which I'm going to show you, but it's a lot of work. What you really want to do, and I'm going to encourage you to do this, is to get the shredded jerky that I have in these two pouches right here. Now, I bought both of these on Amazon. <laughs> so you can get the real imported shredded beef jerky on Amazon. So it's available to everybody, really. Um, and I have not seen one like this that has been manufactured in the United States. If you come in here, now it looks and smells like beef jerky but it's very finely shredded. And I will tell you that the way that they accomplish that uh, most of the time in these commercial brands is to put it through a mill. So it's got two millstones and it goes down through that and it just sort of tears the fibers apart. Now, when I've been cooking with people in Baja in very remote areas of Baja where fresh meat is a rarity, they will turn all the fresh meat into the carne seca. They'll hang it out to dry after salting it and it turns into something that looks just like this and they showed me how you pound it to get that light sort of fluffy consistency out of it. So first step is that you need to put it over a wood fire or put it under a broiler. I did this one under a broiler and it takes about three minutes and it will start getting bubbly looking and then as it cools off it will get crisper. So this stuff is feels hard. This feels crisp. I can just break it apart like that. Okay. Second thing that you do is you you break it into small pieces and then you would put it into I'm using a molcajete here the basalt mortar. Um, in Baja, every place that I've seen people working with the big pieces of jerky have a special stone with a piece that's bigger than this and they just pound it until it gets fluffy. So let me just show you what this is like. I've already started some of it down in here, but you literally just sort of mash it like that and you'll see it start to break apart just like that. So if you get it broiled and crispy and you just kind of mash on it like that, which is not something you usually do with these mortars and pestles, usually you're grinding like this, but here you're just sort of mushing them up and you're getting something that's kind of fluffy like that. Now, another thing that I have done in the past is to take this and dropped it into a blender jar when it's on the slowest speed. And I did that with this right over here. I'll show you this one, but it's a little more finely chopped. You can do it. And it certainly doesn't take any effort on your part, like the pounding in the mortar does, um, but it, it would work. It would work just fine. All that said, if you want the really authentic experience of the properly shredded jerky, then I would suggest that you buy the stuff that you can get online, or you might find it, depending on where you live in the United States, in a Mexican grocery store. Here in Chicago, it's rare that I see it. I usually see the carne seca that is in the whole pieces here. Okay, let's turn it into the huevos revueltos or machacado con huevos. Okay, so this is just like making what we would call huevos a la mexicana or classic Mexican style scrambled eggs, but we first have to cook the jerky in some fat. You have to choose what you're going to do. Vegetable oil gives you something neutral. 
Olive oil would work here, but you've got a lot of competing flavors. Um, you could use lard, which is what they would use in most of northern Mexico and in Baja. Um, or you could use uh, bacon fat that you have kept. That would be super delicious because it would add a little smoky element. I'm going to go for the traditional thing and I'm going to put the, the lard in the pan. Now, this is the part that is surprising to most people. I've got this pan over medium heat here and um, I'm going to let the lard melt. This is fresh rendered pork lard here. It is not the hydrogenated blocks that you can find in the grocery stores. That stuff not only is so it can be detrimental to your health, but it also just doesn't have any flavor. I would use vegetable oil rather than to use that stuff. So I've got that all. I've got my measured out amount of the jerky here, which is one cup. Um, it's two ounces of it. I'm going to take it off the fire because it's a little bit hot right now. Um, and then using a spatula here, I'm going to put this in and you'll notice right away that it starts to absorb all of the fat. Now back over the fire here. It starts to absorb all of the fat and we really want to get a toastiness out of it. Now the shredded jerky that you find in the pouches, the ones that I ordered from Amazon, are not as toasty as what I pounded over here. So I'm going to use this moment here to toast it in the pan and that's not only going to make it more tender, but it's really going to bring out beautiful flavor. So it's going to give it a roasted meat flavor, which otherwise it really wouldn't have. Whether you're making a, like a, you know how they do in, in Northern Mexico, they make the little tiny rolled burritos um, and they you do them out of this machaca, not with scrambled eggs, but made into another filling. This part, this toasting part is really essential to getting a good filling out of it. Uh, we will address that when I'm talking about um, how to make homemade flour tortillas. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a real machaca, uh, machaca kind of uh, uh, filling for that. Now, while this is toasting, I'm going to say if you've been raised in a place where machaca always referred to shredded beef, that's not the original. That is something that has just happened over time when eating the shredded jerky was sort of went out of fashion and people started just using boiled beef um, in that. Uh, but uh, the, tr the traditional one is made with this shredded jerky here. Okay, I can smell it. You can't smell it, unfortunately, but um, it's getting really toasty now. Really beautiful. And I can see that the color is changing a little bit on all of this. So this is the moment where we're going to add the ingredients that go into a classic huevos revueltos a la mexicana. So I'm going to add to it some onions. So this is about a small onion, which will give you a cup. Um, a medium sized tomato chopped up goes in there. And then as much green chili as you want. I'm using a couple of serranos here. Some of you, I don't seed them typically when I'm cooking like this because for me um, and in most Mexican kitchens, um, we're looking for all the heat that would go away if you took the seeds and veins out. Um, so now I'm just going to cook this until everything cooks down. The tomatoes will get soft. They'll release their juices and then we will let it cook long enough for the juices to evaporate. While that's all happening, the onion will definitely uh, soften up and so will the chili. This is looking and smelling really, really good. You can see that it's cooked down now and everything has become sort of homogenous. Uh, we have a couple of things that we're going to use for garnishes here. Uh, one will be a little bit of cilantro that I'll actually scramble in with the, the eggs and then use also as a garnish on top. Uh, just doing that sort of chiffonade cut with it so that I'm, I have very thin slices of the leaves and stems. And at the end of the, the collection of leaves there, the stems go away. I've got a couple of strays back at the end here that need to be cut up. And then I'm going to use the same knife here 
to cut up an avocado. I want to uh, have cubes to go over the top of this. This is certainly not absolutely necessary, but I think it's very welcome uh, scooping out the avocado from the skin like that and then just making little squares out of it. And we're ready to do our scrambling of the eggs. Now, beef jerky in any country has got to have salt in it. So I'm gonna lightly salt these eggs, but I don't wanna over salt them because of the salt that's already in that pan there from the jerky. So I'm gonna put about half as much salt as I would normally put in eight eggs here. And no other additions to this. The eggs go into the pan. I'm gonna start this scrambling. I'm working right now over a kind of medium heat. That's the way I like to do it. Lots of professional chefs do all of the scrambling of the eggs over high heat um, to get really fluffy curds. Maybe you like to do it that way. The French like to do it over low heat and get super creamy eggs. Um, eggs are very adaptable. I like to do mine over a kind of medium heat and I keep bringing the uh, outside as it cooks to the inside, folding it back in and then spreading everything out. Again, I'll take about half of this cilantro to put inside the scrambled egg mixture. We'll put the rest of it on the outside. So it looks good to me now. I'm gonna turn the fire off. You always want to stop the scrambled eggs one stage less cooked than what you're looking for because just the heat of the pan will continue the cooking. Um, so if you like to have some creaminess in there, then stop when they're really creamy and then just let them set in the pan for just a minute for that carryover cooking to happen. Um, I think we're at a pretty good spot here for me. So I'm going to scoop them into a serving dish. Boy, this reminds me so much of being in one of my favorite places in Mexico, which is Baja. And if you ever do go to the Valle de Guadalupe, where all the gorgeous wineries are, you have to go to Doña Estela for breakfast. And she makes some of the best northern Mexican food that I have ever had in my life, um, including stuff with the shredded jerky. Um, so the next thing that will go on here will, of course, be the little avocado cubes. And maybe we'd want to put these into a bowl on the side for more people to, or people to have more of it, a little sprinkling of cilantro over the tie, top, and then you've got a very traditional machacado con huevo, northern Mexican style. Serve it with warm tortillas, and in this case, I'm going to say warm flour tortillas because that's the most traditional in the place where machacado con huevo is made. I hope you enjoy having an adventure with the dried jerky, the carne seca. Mm -hmm.